Okay, so in this video, we will consider our first example of what's known as a separable differential equation. Now, a differential equation is an equation involving three things. The independent variable, the actual function, and its derivatives. Here we only have the first derivative of f, but the equation could also contain higher derivatives. So given this equation, we're trying to solve for f of x, the unknown function. And here in this problem, we want to find again the function f that satisfies this differential equation, and we're given an initial condition. f at 1 is equal to negative 3. Now without the initial condition, there would be here an infinite number of solutions, of functions f of x that would satisfy this equation, but if we specify an initial condition, this will determine a unique function f that satisfies simultaneously the differential equation and the initial condition. But why do we call this equation separable? If you think of it here, we can't be naive about this. You can't just say, well, to undo the derivative, we'll simply integrate both sides, and then we'll have our function. But the function f of x is an unknown function, so you can't just integrate f of x as you don't know what f of x is. So we have to be clever about this, and the idea is to make a change of variables. So we are going to let y be equal to f of x, and then you'll see the equation will become an equation involving x's and y's only, and if we separate all the x's together and all the y's together, we'll have an equality between two differentials, a differential in x, a differential in y, and then as we integrate both sides, we'll be able to recover, hopefully, y as an explicit function of x. <coughs> Sorry? So let's see. We need now the derivative. So if y equals f of x, we can differentiate y with respect to x. This will be, of course, f prime of x. And now let's replace. So x times f prime, so x times dy over dx. minus f of x minus y. And this equals f of x over x, which is y over x. Well, the next step is to add y on both sides. And we have x dy over dx equals y plus y over x. And we can factor y, which gives us y times 1 plus 1 over x. Let us then, if you think of dy as an infinitesimal change in y and dx as an infinitesimal change in x, we can multiply both sides by dx. And so we'll have that x dy will be equal to y times 1 plus 1 over x times dx. And now in one additional step, we can complete the separation of the variables. We will divide by x and divide by y. So this will give us that 1 over y dy equals 1 over x times 1 plus 1 over x dx. Again, simply dividing both sides by x and by y. So 1 over y dy, check, will be 1 over x times 1 plus 1 over x dx, check. So that's the first step. We have a separation of the variables, all the y's and all the x's together. <coughs> the question is now what? Well, if you think of it, on the left you have a differential as a function of y, on the right you have a differential as a function of x, but both sides are equal as differentials, therefore they have the same integral. So we can integrate both sides and preserve the equality. And this can only be achieved if on one side everything is with respect to y and on the other if everything is with respect to x. Let's see what happens now. If we integrate 1 over y dy, this is of course a ln of y in absolute value. Again, when we find two indefinite integrals, we only need to add 
the arbitrary constant on either side of the equality. And here I'll add the plus c on the other side. But how do we integrate this? Well, as we have a product, we're stuck. So we have to multiply the argument. And if we do, we're going to have, well, 1 over x plus 1 over x times 1 over x is 1 over x squared. But thinking of the power rule, I will write 1 over x squared as x to the minus 2. So now we can integrate this very easily. The integral of 1 over x with respect to x is the ln of x in absolute value plus power rule here. So we add 1 to the exponent. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. And we divide by negative 1 plus now the constant of integration. We can simplify this a little bit as this becomes the ln of y in absolute value equals the ln of x in absolute value minus 1 over x plus c. Now it remains to isolate y if we can as a function of x. And here we will be able to solve for y explicitly as a function of x. Keep in mind that for some examples this will not be possible. But whenever it is possible, we should go an extra step in solving for y as a function of x. And we also have to solve the arbitrary constant of integration using the initial condition. And that was that f of 1 was equal to 3. And we can translate this in terms of x and y. So this is saying when x is 1, f of 1 will be the y value, which is negative 3. So when x is 1, y is negative 3. So let me just rewrite this here. So when x is 1, y is negative 3. And I will just substitute in order to solve for c. So an absolute value, negative 3 is 3. So this is the ln of 3 equals, well, the ln of 1 is 0. So this goes away, minus 1 over 1, which is 1. So minus 1 plus c. Add 1 on both sides, and c is simply the ln of 3 plus 1. So now we have the value of c. We can plug it back in. So what do we have now? That the ln of y in absolute value equals the ln of x in absolute value minus 1 over x plus c, which is ln of 3 plus 1. And now we have solved for c, and it remains to isolate y as a function of x. Well, to isolate y, we have to cancel the logarithmic function base e. So, of course, we exponentiate both sides with the natural exponential. If you remember, e to the ln of anything, say a, as long as a is positive, is going to be a. As e is the inverse of ln, if you compose them, they cancel each other out, and you return the argument. So we will exponentiate here both sides with the natural exponential. So we'll have e to the ln of y in absolute value equals e of the entire right-hand side. All right, so first cancellation, canceling e with the ln on the left. So we have the absolute value of y equals, and here we can simplify as well. We have the exponential of a sum of four terms. And you can ask, well, how could we simplify this? Given that we have an e to the ln here, so we'd like to cancel at least this one. Well, suppose you have e to the a plus b. If you remember, this is simply e to the a times e to the b. When you multiply the same base. If you go backwards, the base is e in both cases. If you multiply the same base, you can combine under a say one base by adding the exponents. So e to the a times e to the b is e to the a plus b. So here we'll use this property. So we'll split those up into three exponentials. So we have e to the ln of x in absolute value times e to the ln of 3 and I will leave the 1 minus 1 over x as one term. 
So e to the 1 minus 1 over x. And you can double check. We're multiplying three exponentials. They have the same base. So we can combine under one exponential if we add the exponents. And if we do ln of x in absolute value plus ln of 3 plus 1 plus minus 1 over x, things work out. And now we can cancel quite a bit. e to the ln, this cancels. So we have the absolute value of x. e to the ln cancels. So we have 3. So this will be 3 times the absolute value of x. And we're left with this exponential, e to the 1 minus 1 over x. And now the only question left is how do we get rid of the absolute value? As we have the absolute value of y equals this expression, we'd like y equals the expression. Well, suppose the absolute value of y equals 4, then y is either, as the absolute value makes things positive, it gets rid of the negative sign, so y could be positive 4, of course, or negative 4. So there are two solutions. If an absolute value of y equals 4, y is either positive of the expression or the negative of the expression. Well, the same holds true here. So y will be plus or minus this expression. 3 absolute value of x e to the 1 minus 1 over x. <coughs> the only question is, we were expecting a unique solution. Now it seems that we have two solutions. y could be the positive of this expression or the negative. How do we tell? Every time in the end that you're left with multiple possible solutions, you have to go back to the initial condition. And the initial condition was, when x equals 1, y must be negative 3. So let's replace and see whether we keep the positive solution or the negative. So replacing y by negative 3 will give us negative 3 equals plus or minus 3. The absolute value of 1 is 1, so 3 times 1. And e to the 1 minus 1 over 1 is 1 minus 1, which is 0. e to the 0 is 1, times 1 is 1, so we're left with plus or minus 3. As we know the answer is negative 3, we have to pick the negative of the solution. And so we ignore the positive part, and now we have our unique final answer, y as an explicit function of x is negative 3 times the absolute value of x times the exponential base e of 1 minus 1 over x. And that is our unique solution. And we're done. So if you go back, only the first step was really the new step, which was whenever you have a differential equation that involves not only x and f prime, but also f of x, the original function. You have to make the change of variable, letting y be f of x. Therefore, f prime is dy over dx. Once you replace, you have to implement the separation of variables, which means putting all the y's together, all the x's together. Then you can integrate. Then you'll have an equation involving y's and x's, and then you try to solve for y as a, an explicit function of x. And you can always solve for the arbitrary constant using the initial condition. Now one last comment is sometimes the after you integrate both sides, you'll have a rather complex equation involving x's and y's. And in some cases, it will be impossible to isolate y as a function of x. So just keep this in mind. But whenever possible, we should try to isolate y explicitly as a function of x. And that's it.